Hey guys, this is Jeremy Taylor with In The Daw. Welcome back. Today, we are going to be starting a series on how to get started inside of PreSonus Studio One. And this video is going to be focusing on selecting your audio interface and setting up your I.O. So with that said, let's just jump straight into the video and take a look. All right, you guys. So this is the Studio One splash screen that first starts off when you open up Studio One. It's pretty simple, and if you've used Studio One before, you'll notice that the only real difference is, is it has a slightly different UI. Some of these buttons and some of these logos are a little bit more high def, but otherwise it looks pretty much the same. Now this series is really focusing on beginners to Studio One, so if you're pretty intermediate or advanced, you might want to wait till later on because we're going to have more videos for intermediate and advanced stuff. So for now, let's start off with selecting our interface. It's really simple. In Studio One, you have several options. You can configure audio devices or you can click on the picture. I just click on the picture. It's easier and it's faster. This is going to bring up the options tab with the audio setup menu. You simply click right here and it will allow you to select whatever interface you have. Keep in mind that you are going to have to install the drivers for whatever interface you have. And I highly recommend keeping the most up-to-date drivers because they tend to be the most stable. Now I do have a Studio Live AI series console, but because this particular computer doesn't have a Firewire input, I don't have that option. So I'm going to have to use a different computer for that video. But for now, let's select a third-party interface just because I wanna show you that this works with any interface you have. You select the interface, you hit okay. You're done. Now we're going to create a new song. We simply click on create a new song. And this is going to bring up our new song dialog tab. We're going to be able to have three different little tabs right here. We have everything from styles to interfaces to user presets. Now I actually wiped my user presets so I can show you how easy it is to work with this. But let's say you don't quite know what you're doing. You can go into styles and it'll show you a bunch of different styles and give you a good starting off point. If you have an interface made by PreSonus, you are going to have a session template and an I.O. setup that's designed specifically for that interface. So in my case, it would be the uh, Studio Live 16.4.2 AI series, the Studio Live consoles, and any other interfaces that have onboard DSP also integrate with Studio One seamlessly. So I'm going to have to be showing you guys that in a different video. For now, we're going to do empty song. This is pretty easy. We just name the song. So I'm going to put in the DAW or ITD, and then we're gonna do start series. We can select where we wanna place it. I have it pre-set up to load up on a secondary hard drive. I can show you guys how to do that in a later video. We select the sample rate. This pretty much supports all sample rates. I have all my sessions at 48, just because I do film stuff sometimes, and all film is done at 48. We select the bit depth. I highly recommend you stay away from 16-bit nowadays because it's an older format. It has less headroom and more noise. It's great for when you're releasing a CD and mastering something, but when you're recording, you want to have as little noise and as much headroom as possible. Everything else from time base, song length, tempo, time signature, key signatures, all can be changed after the fact, so we don't really have to worry about them. And then we have the option to have stretch audio files to song tempo or play overlaps. This again can be changed inside the session. We hit OK and that's it. We've created a new song. The first thing I like to do is save this. So Control S. And now we're going to set up our I.O. This is really simple. We just click on the Mix tab. And if you want to use hotkeys, it's F3. And then we go right here where it says I.O. This is going to bring up our interfaces I.O. As you see here, I already have this particular interfaces I.O. set up, but I'm going to delete them all. So I can show you guys how to do this from scratch. Hit apply, and now we have it set up like our interface has no inputs routed. Now the first thing you wanna do is figure out how many inputs your particular interface has. I know this one has four analog inputs, XLR and quarter inch, and it has four outputs, a main and a alt out. So I'm gonna add two mono tracks, add a stereo track, add two more mono tracks and another stereo track. The reason why I do this is because you're not able to really move these around after you place them. So I like to have two mono and one stereo, and I make that basically one, two, and left and right. And then I can do it with the other two, or three and four, three, four, and left and right. This way I have an option to either record the mono tracks or a stereo blend of either one and two and three and four. Now you are gonna have options to do other things like using uh, stereo tracks that only have a mono input, but for now, let's stick to keeping things as simple as possible. The way that this works, though, is that you see your input one for your digital return, and you see your input one for your actual hardware. What you want to do is you want to match them. So one and one is going to go here. 
two and two is going to go here. Three and three technically would go right here. And four and four would go right here. But because input three is our stereo input, we simply just go one and two. We can also rename these. So I'm going to put one, two, one dash two, three, four, three dash four. I'm going to move these around so it fits properly. And then we just hit apply. Now you're going to see the audio coming in from my microphone again. As you see here on channel one, it's coming in mono. On channel one and two, it's coming into the left. Next, we're going to go to our output. This particular interface has four outputs, two stereo. And I'm just going to add another stereo track right here. And I'm going to name this Alt Out. You'll notice that this automatically selects it to be the secondary output. And if you have one of these outputs that is basically going to a headphone amp, you can easily select it to be your Qmix, and this will automatically have all channels routing this out to your headphone amp. For this interface, we don't have that cool option, so I will show you guys how to utilize that later. With that said, we can also select our audition path. For this, I highly recommend you keeping it your main output because this is going to make sure anything you audition or listen back to is going to be played through your main outputs. You hit apply, and you're done. That's all you really need to know to get your session started and how to set up your I.O. and select your interface. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more content like this. We are going to be focusing on the beginners for this particular series, but we are going to be going over more advanced and intermediate things later on. So with that said, I will see you guys in a few seconds. All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And remember that this is really focused for beginners. We are going to do something for intermediate and advanced Studio One users. But if you want to see anything specific, go down in the description below, sign up for a newsletter and contact us inside of the comments or on our website and let us know what you want to see specifically. This is Jeremy Toth in the DAW. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.